So I'll talk about how to make we websites and applications using Python. And uh, uh, there are two uh, Python frameworks uh, which everybody should know. One is called FastAPI for serving data, usually JSON. And this is how you start it in your Python code. And another is called FastHTML for serving interactive websites or web applications. So from fast HTML, <laughs> import fast HTML and your application will be fast HTML. They both use very similar underlying technologies, asynchronous technologies, high, highly performant, very convenient. And uh, yeah, this is a good way to go. So I want to give a historic uh, overview. So in 94, uh, web browser. Well, it's starting with Tim Berners-Lee, who created HTML, URL, and World Wide Web browser editor in 1990. Right? It only worked on Next Station. I remember Next Stations from Columbia University. They had several. Uh, the first widely used web browser for Mosaic Netscape was developed by Mark Andresen and Eric Bina. And uh, here are the, the pictures. And this is, of course, how HTML looks like. And then in 95, uh, JavaScript was developed by Brandon Eich for Netscape 2. And then in 96, cascading style sheets, uh, Hakun Vium Lee. This is an uh, example of style sheets. Then uh, web servers. Uh, nowadays, uh, Nginx is uh, the leader. But for many years, you see this blue line? It was Apache, and then Apache went down and Nginx grew. Well, they close Nginx a little bit above Apache. So there are some, some other uh, web servers. Microsoft doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, uh, serving active co uh, content. So you have a browser, uh, you talk to some server, let's say it's Nginx, and it may serve uh, static content like HTML pages, CSS, JavaScript, images, or active content, which may be Python, Perl, PHP, Java, whatever. And these are examples of some scripts. Like I remember writing uh, CGI scripts in Perl. And by the way, CGI stands for Common Gateway Interface. So if you want uh, to send something from Perl, you print content type text HTML. Uh, new line, new line, and then you provide some HTML, and then you end with one, which is just to say that everything is okay. And this was how we were writing Perl scripts. Um, then uh, people created a more uh, like comprehensive standard, which is called WSGI, Web Server Gateway Interface. And the, more recently, asynchronous server gateway interface. The problem with CGI and WSGI was that you start a script and until the script will finish executing and return the data, you cannot use it to process something else. With ASGI, you can, uh, in parallel, uh, keep several connections open and process multiple requests. So this is uh, better technology. Uh, now, the problem, although, is that uh, many web servers uh, cannot understand ASGI uh, protocol. So, for example, Nginx by itself, uh, it's a good web server, but it, it, it doesn't support it. So, what people do, they uh, concatenate things, like they use Nginx, which talks to Green Unicorn, which is WSGI, Web Server Gateway, which then talks to UVCore, which is ASGI server, which then talks to, let's say, a fast API framework uh, to provide data or whatever. So uh, all this uh, today can be uh, simplified. I'll show in the next uh, script. Um, I've done all of those things over the years. So for example, this is Python using Green Unicorn and uh, uh, no other frameworks. So uh, you can start it with one command and provide config file in which you say how many workers you want. Uh, this is ASGI with uh, fast HTML. Uh, looks very simple if you take like a very simplistic application. And people uh, concatenate, uh, like th th this is really ugly architecture. I would never do it today like this. 
this, this is stupid this is from like several years ago but you see browsers talk to some load balancer there are a couple of virtual machines uh, servers which run in nginx servers which talk to green unicorn python applications which use flask framework application to serve something like in this case it's a tensorflow keras uh, application right don't do it this way <laughs> there is absolutely no need uh, there is also Django and, and ma many other frameworks. Uh, again, no need. Uh, let me. Oh yeah, Nginx also has um, something called N N Nginx Unit, which is both a proxy web server and application server, and it supports asynchronous protocol. So it may be actually a good uh, thing to use, and then uh, you can connect it directly to Fast API or Fast HTML. Uh, but uh, again, maybe not, um, because if you want uh, to use load balancer with sticky sessions, then uh, you cannot use uh, specify multiple workers. Like when you start UVCorn server, you cannot specify workers or green unicorn workers because then you will lose stickiness. And the way it should be uh, constructed is that you have a load balancer and you just go to amazon or like azure cloud or google cloud and they all provide uh, load balancers with some crazy parallelization and uh, you just select for example amazon application load balancer and that's all you need and then you directly communicate to uvcorn servers and you can start multiple uvcorn servers on one computer on multiple computers they will uh, be different in the ports or maybe different ips if you have multiple computers but this is a very very simple architecture you see no green unicorns nothing uh yeah uh now um, how how you do it well you can start uh, uvcorn servers uh on linux uh using uh, system d and then uh that's that's example of the script uh, how to arrange it, how to make it as a system server. And this script is a little bit more complex than usual because what's happening here, um, I also added the health check. So the, the system uh, checks uh, if it is responsive and if it is not responsive, it uh, restarts the servers. So it's self heals, which is important for reliability. But you see, it's it, it, it's really difficult to arrange. Now, uh, let's talk about fast API and uh, fast HTML. So fast API, uh, uh, what you're doing, uh, let, let me show you example of uh, the script. So here, for example, from fast API, import fast API, you create some routes and fast API um, has uh, something called swagger where uh, when you go to, this is you're running it locally and then you say slash docs and uh, it's included uh, in the fast api model it will show you all these routes which you defined here like uh, root items you see all of them and the commands which you can use get to post and you can actually click here and uh, run them and test how they work so it's really, really convenient. It's called Swagger, like uh, showing off. Like <laughs> it's, uh, it's self-documenting. So the Swagger is uh, documentation and testing. Like really, really convenient. So uh, Fast API, modern since 2018, high performance. Uh, uses Pydentic uh, to check the requests. Uh, uses Starlet. It's a light uh, ASGI uh, protocol. Uh, or framework rather intuitive easy to use learn auto completion fast code debug uh, short minimize code duplication robust standards based uh, json uh, you run it using uv corn it doesn't include the server in itself uh, implements asynchronous server gateway interface, uh, uses UV loops, uh, uses HTTP tools. Okay, um, comparing with Flask, uh, 
Well, there was a Python module called bottle and then <laughs> flask. Uh, flask is uh, simple, uh, minimal, uh, re also written in Python, uh, easy setup, but it's not using asynchronous protocol. It's using the web server gateway interface. So it's not recommended for uh, uh, scaling. Uh, so fast API is better, faster, has a swagger, and uh, so yeah, it, it's a good thing to, to use. Uh, yeah, th this is uh, about Swagger. So Swagger was actually developed before Fast API uh, in 2011 by uh, Tony Tam, and uh, then uh, it uh, become it was donated to Linux Foundation, and it has become Open API specification but nobody remembers to say open ai specification people just say swagger <laughs> and uh, yeah so fast api uses swagger ui uh, it's now part of open api uh, uses docs endpoint now there is another uh, endpoint which is called redoc so swagger is slash docs and redoc is slash redoc and uh, they uh, both provide uh, interface something similar well redoc is maybe better organized but redoc doesn't allow you to test it's just documentation whereas swagger allows you to test your application okay next thing is uh, fast html yeah so um, uh, fast api is to sending and receiving data you send data usually as JSON and you receive response usually as JSON. So if you have some sort of uh, machine learning uh, like model and you want to serve it, Fast API is a perfect solution for that. Uh, if you want to create a, a website, uh, interactive website, some active functionality, then Fast HTML. Uh, fast HTML uh, based on Python, it uses some JavaScript libraries, uh, style uh, sheet uh, libraries. You also started with UV Corn, it's also using async protocol. Everything is very, very similar. Amazingly uh, effective, uh, easy to use. Again, high, highly recommend. Uh, JavaScript. Uh, I don't know why people like JavaScript. Uh, in fact, when people were asked what's the language you like the least, <laughs> JavaScript gets most of the complaints, but there are a lot of um, different frameworks, as, as you can see, all over the years. And of course, Node.js is a leader on the server side and React, uh, I guess, on the front end. Uh, other web technologies, uh, load balancers, uh, responsive HTML templates. Uh, uh, when you're designing a web website, there is no need to start HTML from scratch. You can just search for responsive template. Responsive means that it will look good both on uh, your computer and on your phone. It will change the way the menu works. Uh, different web server frameworks, uh, uh, Django, uh, I used to use Django. It, it, it's a huge thing, like millions of lines of code, uh, Python-based, very opinionated on how things should be done. I, I wouldn't use it on a new project. I would just go with fast HTML. Uh, single sign-on, uh, Azure Active Directory, Google, Google Firebase. Firebase is a good thing from Google. Uh, so they provide tools to build web applications. Uh, for example, if you need single sign-on, right? If you need uh, authentication, authorization. But now you, you can also use Superbase, which is an open source alternative to Firebase. Uh, anyway, uh, web security, uh, important part of all the web applications. So I put together this uh, slide just to introduce the terminology, a single sign-on, security assertion markup uh, language, which is similar, like uh, it's basically XML, uh, Auth2, open authorization, three-legged, two-legged schemes, and so on. I will not talk about it, but just to give you an idea and some links. Okay, thank you.